So our next entrepreneur, after working for years as a journalist, saw a decline in some print media around the country and decided there needed to be a new outlet in Atlanta for online Jewish news that affects Atlantans. And started AtlantaJewishNews.com. But when she's not doing that, she wanted me to let you know that she can always be found dancing with her daughter to any song by Pink. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Marcy Levinson Brooks. <laughs> Atlanta is a vast, sprawling community, making it difficult, if not impossible, to connect and find out what's going on. This poses a problem for Atlanta's Jewish community. To get involved in one large Jewish community, Federation study showed that 30% of the Jews surveyed said they find it to be very important to connect to the Atlanta Jewish community. However, of those people surveyed, only 19% Excuse me. Only 19% of those said that they actually felt very connected. People want to connect. We know this because we got an email from a guy who was new to town, he was recently divorced, and had a 12-year-old daughter. He was looking for a place to go to Seder. He turned to AtlantaJewishNews.com because he didn't have anywhere else to go. Atlanta's community is so sprawling and in dire need of a single access point so people know what is going on. AtlantaJewishNews.com can be that connector to get people involved. For example, the Nazis and the KKK showed up on the steps of the Georgia Capitol in April, and AtlantaJewishNews.com was there to broadcast. Any comment to our Jewish community? Yeah, they can burn the hell. I'll send them to it. This guy's fishing. The Jew and the colored boy. Get their picture. What's your take on Jews? Just the word Israel sticks in my mouth because it's not legitimate. It's not a legitimate country. AtlantaJewishNews.com was there making sure the community stayed in the know. We get about 15,000 hits a month from 5,000 unique viewers. Out of 120,000 Jews in Atlanta, we are only reaching 4% of our community. That is small compared to our need. Here's where we are. We're in Roswell, Atlanta, North Metro, Decatur coming, Duluth. We're in Peachtree City. These are our actual Google demographics to show where we are. All the way over to Columbus, Savannah, and down to Valdosta. Raise your hand if you know somebody in the Jewish community who has a story. Everyone should have their hands raised because everyone has a story to tell. But without a single access point to get us out on the ground and cover these stories, these stories that we want to share with our community that can draw us closer together and connect us and make us stronger, it's hard to tell them. Last week, there were 110 events across Jewish Atlanta. That is remarkable. That's like 17 a day. Figure out where you want to be, but you guys are here at Shark Tank. That is remarkable. Did you also know there is no one single website that aggregates that information so you can find out where to be? We spend about $25,000 a year. It costs that to run the most basic of community news websites. That doesn't cover professional, high-def cameras, cutting-edge computer technology, and the ability to stream live to the web. Look around here. Did you guys like do the armband struggle to get in here tonight? There, there was so much confusion because we had so many people here. It was awesome. People were like passing their armbands to each other, like sneaking into a concert. It was, it was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> But look around, we even have people standing in the back. So wouldn't it be awesome if AtlantaJewishNews.com had the capability to also be streaming this live to the web so more of the Atlanta Jewish community, including my mom in Florida and friends in Charlotte, could be involved in this groundbreaking community event? Our goal this year is $50,000. We would like to raise $50,000.
This will allow us to put more reporters on the ground, more places, to cover even more news. To provide a community liaison to go out and actually gather this news, to work with other local Jewish media organizations to bring this news into one place, and also to stay on the cutting edge of technology, to continue bringing real-time news our Atlanta Jewish community needs. Jewish news is happening around us all the time. This is news that affects us. These are the stories that we want to share. These are the stories that create the fabric of our lives and draw us together so we can stay connected and we can know what's going on. So tonight, we ask for you to pledge to us so we can continue bringing you quality news coverage. Not only do you need us, but we need you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? I, <clears throat> I should really be the first. Not, no, the reason I'm older and I'm a total dinosaur. All right? You have a blog. So I don't, I don't quite understand the, the web, but I do know <laughs> that every one of my kids is only one arm, has only one arm because the other arm is holding the phone. Absolutely. So um, reaching this, this, I think, is very, very important. What is the content? Because that's really what, what captures people. And you could get people to tie up. Uh, I know through studies that have been done, people go on, online, on site, and will only stay there for one or two, and then they move off. Right. What is your, how do you hold them? What is the content that's going to say, come back over and over again? Because if you don't have that, you're not going to be successful. So what is the content? The content is features, unfortunately obituaries. Uh, we aggregate news from the community based on the newspaper model. Any kind of section C2 or D1 or A1, the front page, are the stories that we like to put on there. We get a lot of community input. We also go out in the community. We get these stories from people. So the content is really reader driven. What people want is what we do our best to deliver. Uh, we are going to be working with other organizations to help bring, if they don't currently have active websites, they're covering Jewish news or secular news coverage. We want to bring that content in and make that accessible in one place. So this year actually is a nonprofit. It's a little bit different model. There's not competition for advertising dollars like with traditional news models that we are community service. And a lot of people don't realize in the news business, you know, I wanted to see my story in there and the publishers are behind the scenes going, I understand you want to see your story, but we're a business here, you know, and, and we're not a community service, we are a community service. So what we hear from the community is what we will bring the content to the community. I hope that answers your question. I'm confused because you talk about, you know, the, the whole model of, you know, providing news and content to a mm -hmm. specific audience is a really clear profit model that so many people do. So I don't understand how it's a community service because if the content is compelling enough, you should be able to reach your audience, have advertisers, and, and be self-sustaining. Absolutely. It has been a challenge for several organizations who have gone strictly online for their news coverage. It is a huge IRS issue right now. It's taking up to two years to get nonprofit status for these because the IRS we is thinking, we know about that. It's just a tax break. <laughs> but it's a tea party. <laughs> Uh, but, but what it boils down to yes, is yes, yes, online yes. news sources have found that traditional uh, billboard ads, things like that, aren't really the money makers that they are in print advertising. So there are affiliate cooperation, but how the model works now is our primary source of funding will be through grant sponsorships, uh, partnerships. We can still sell advertising, but it's not exactly the main focus. So there, as y'all know, there is a tax issue involved. So it, it can be a slippery slope as far as the way a news or organization is perceived, as well as something very firm in the nonprofit status is serving an educational purpose. And where we go out to the community and we actually speak to professionals and experts in areas and we're able to 
educate the community, such as the Jewish Gene Screen, and let people know about all the Jewish genetic diseases. That, to us, was a community service in making people aware. Do you find, um, you know, because the, the country and the world is getting so small, it seems that, you know, a lot of the local news becomes less relevant to the younger people who are really looking for a wider audience. Have you figured out how to scale content beyond just Atlanta, and is it relevant? Yes. To we, a larger audience? What we do is we look, we get PR pieces in every day, flooded with them. So what I do is I go through them and I check to see is there an Atlanta name? Sometimes I have to go, is there a Jewish name in this? If not, it goes to a different email folder. But what is the Atlanta connection? So we have a delegation of folks coming over from Israel right now, and I have an Israel correspondent who said, Marcy, we've got a group coming over to Atlanta. There's some connection here. Let's pick up the story. So we try to take international, national, and local stories and really find a connection to them. So that's the way that we try to keep it what we call hyper-local. So you guys are interested in these stories to see how it connects to you. That's why there's a peach with the Jewish star. Why there's a peach with the Jewish star. Thank you, Kobe Edelson, with the peach with the Jewish <laughs> star in it. Yeah. Great graphic designer. <laughs> um, just call me. Um, there's so many things that are needed for this. I mean, it's a business. Um, I think it shouldn't be a nonprofit. I mean, I'm kind of with, with that. I think the nonprofit status totally gets in your way. But just just call me, come find me afterwards. I mean, this is what I do all day long, and this is a fabulous business, everybody, but it, it can be monetized so quickly and can grow so fast. But um, as a nonprofit, I, I don't you shouldn't put yourself into a nonprofit status. You should be, you should have said to all of us, tonight I want you to advertise with me. I don't want you to donate with me. I want you to advertise with me. You came here tonight, put, put your business card in an ad for 15 bucks. Say that you support the fact that we have a Jewish community that needs information, that we need to not let this Nazi stuff happen, but that's just the emotional appeal. We should advertise. Everybody should be doing that. Okay. This is a great business model. <laughs> no, this, okay. is, this, this is a great, you can do this, but we need to, personally, I think you need to move from a nonprofit incubator to a for-profit incubator. Um, you, you can do this, but you know, just don't leave. Come find me. Do you have a blank um, check? <laughs> Thank you. So text AJN to 51818, or better yet, advertise with her. <laughs>